George, since you directed me to an article by the Einstein Institute I got the sinking feeling that a collaboration between us would be unlikely. Einstein was a corporate loyalist and after he did some great work along with his mentor, James Clark Maxwell he set off doing corporate bidding. Maxwell was the first one given the opportunity to become famous with a version of E equals MC squared but he refused. Einstein must have then been given an offer he could not refuse and consistent with his sense of humor, used C for the speed of light. C as in Clark and C for the job he held in the patent office, which was Clark. His next theory on gravity, which makes no good sense, I will include herein and also I will show you how it was Newton's E equals one half mv squared from which E equals mc squared was derived. If you will just work out the units for yourself you will find a two-dimensional component. Newton himself abandoned E equals one half mv squared and it does not even appear on Wikipedia, and Einstein's only mentioned as a famous formula. Neither formula has ever been used except to introduce the confusion of kinetics into quantum physics. Einstein introduced the theory of dark matter, which I use today as a model in my theory of the primordial particle. Einstein had to withdraw from dark matter, calling it the biggest mistake he ever made. Einstein was there in London when they were coming up with the expanding universe theory. The corporation is headquartered in the inner city of London also called the Corporation of London, the corporation is what they call themselves. The Big Bang is still a viable theory however the expanding universe does not hold up. The cosmological redshift is not held up as true. E equals MC squared was conceived by this man, Leszek. It was Einstein. Good. Running MC for 2000. The equation's insight into the behavior of light was an extension of the work of this three-named Scott around 1870. Leszek. It was James Clerk Maxwell. You got it. Uh, but in 1927, a Belgian, a Belgian priest, the Abbe Lemaitre, as he later became, uh, also discovered these solutions. And he uh, went to England, and his work was uh, publicized in Cambridge and elsewhere, and the famous uh, English astronomer Sir Arthur Eddington and others got to know about this, and they immediately began to say, how can this apply to the current universe? Well, in the same period, in 1929, Hubble, he showed that if you look at the, the, the spiral nebulae, the faint spiral nebulae, the shifts in their spectra are proportional to their apparent brightnesses. And this led very soon to the idea that this fitted very well with the expanding universe and that indeed uh, this is the kind of universe we lived in, that what we were looking at are, are galaxies, Milky Ways, further and further away from us, and the further away from us, the larger the redshifts, and if that's interpreted in the way that most people would interpret it, this means that they are moving away faster and faster. So this was the original idea by the 1930s, the front page of the New York Times said we live in an expanding universe. The thing to remember is that basically there is no understanding of gravity. Newton was wise enough not to propose any theory, he just said that uh, here's an equation, my law of gravity if you like, and it, it works, but I make no hypotheses. Unfortunately those who came later uh, were prepared to follow Newton's path and, cons and feel that they had explained gravity when in fact they hadn't. Uh, Einstein's theory doesn't explain gravity it has matter somehow affecting space in a way which is completely unphysical, in other words warping empty space. There's no explanation of, as to how this might happen uh, or what it even means. So we have more equations but without any real meaning.